I were absolutely delighted to be here. As, as Leslie said, we, we go around to various, basically it's been mostly libraries in the area. This is, this is about our 15th time we've, that we've done this this season. And um, this is, typically we, we, we've done presentations on growing a summer garden or, or like a composting or raised beds, really gardening related. This is, this is different in a sense because this is not gardening related, it's more what to do with a mother load of vegetables once, once they come your way. Um, you can try, I mean, some of us have, so I have, I had zucchinis this big. Every, anyone use a zoodle, zoodle? Yeah, zoodle, they call them, the, a, a machine that actually spiralizes the zucchini. You do zucchini fritters, fried zucchini, um, what else, zucchini bread, zucchini uh, soup, all kinds of stuff. But still, there's too much. Don't try to give them to your neighbor because they won't return your call because they're in the, in the same boat. So, <laughs> and by the way, zucchini is one of those uh, types of things that uh, can be frozen, dehydrated, or canned. So, it, this, this is the way, you know, economically to, to, uh, to take all that good stuff. You've worked so hard in the garden on your knees and, and taking the weeds out and spraying and doing everything you need to do. Now's the time that Christmas time, you're having the family over. Well, you know what? Um, you know, Christmas Eve, you want to do some pasta or, or what have you. You'll have your own uh, pasta sauce in there. You can just take take right out and, and use. So just a little thing, just a little something about Eric, Eric and myself and about our, our approach to, to, to food and, and growing food in general is, first of all, um, we're frugal. So a lot of times I'll tell you which is the more expensive way and which is the cost cutting way, but one of the great things about um, gardening and growing food is networking with other people. Well, I heard you say that you traded two bags of poop for, what was it? Um, for a jar of honey. For a jar of honey, there you go. So, and that's the way, that's the way our grandparents did it. I remember as a little girl taking the tomatoes and, and, and giving them out and, and uh, you know, our neighbors would reciprocate in, in some way. Um, but but we're, we're, we're fairly frugal. We like to use uh, cost-effective uh, methods. Another thing about it is we, we really try to, to be organic and use the freshest, uh, you know, the freshest methods of, of, of growing food, preserving food uh, that, that we can, and, and we'll go over some of those as well, whenever it's practical. Um, there, are, there are a few little cheats that you can do that's completely harmless. Um, and another thing, we're all about, we're all about good health. I'm a, I'm a 10 year cancer survivor myself, so, and I swear one of the reasons is because half the food I eat is the stuff that I grow in the garden. Unfortunately, the other half is cookies, so I'll, I'll have to do something about that. But at least I have, at least I have some of it, some of it right. So in any case, we are going to review uh, freezing, canning, and dehydrating. Another thing we like is we really enjoy the exchange because um, you know the, the, the conversation go, doesn't go two ways; it go, goes many ways. We all we all learn from each other. Everybody's and everybody's garden. You usually do it with your, your, your mom, your grandmother, or, or whomever, and uh, you may have a different technique that uh, then maybe I can teach somebody at, at the next class. So, so in, this, in this presentation, as I say, we will go over uh, uh, freezing, freezing your fruits and veggies, what blanching is, what the freezing uh, what equipment uh, and methods you can use to freeze. We'll also go over canning. We'll go over pressure canning, water bath canning, and canning process and safety. I don't want anybody to be afraid to can. But canning is one of those things, you know when you when you go in the kitchen and you wing it and you get all get real creative with it. Canning it, you can do that with canning, but you really have to follow a few simple basic steps in order to make sure that your food is safe. Um, the other thing we'll go over, and we have some great videos as well, is of dehydrating. So um, the equipment to use when you dehydrate and uh, the different techniques for dehydrating foods. So, okay. okay, blanching. So blanching is the process. It's done to clean foods, release the flavor, and preserve the color of the food. Um, it's, it's, so before you, you, you freeze something, 
you will uh, boil it for two or three minutes, and then you'll uh, dip it in ice for two or three minutes to stop the cooking process. There's a video on this that you'll see as well. But it's important to freezing. You don't want to freeze food um, that's fresh from the garden or just, just washed off. You want to blanch it first. It'll make it more colorful. It'll make it taste better. Um, so another thing about freezing is freezing does change the texture of foods that have high water content. Um, typically foods, some that are eaten fresh, um, it won't have the same crunch. Like an apple won't have the same crunch to it. Uh, try, try freezing some lettuce, high, high water content food, and, and you're going to get some, something that you could probably put in a smoothie, and that's about it. Um, so freezing, depending upon the method you use, you can preserve your food. Uh, you can freeze for, for months. If you if you use the, the good uh, the most you know the good uh, freezing freezing techniques, so so here's here's what we use. Um, basically, a lot of people do this. They use the freezer bags with a little straw. So in other words, they'll blanch the food, put it in the freezer bag. And there's a difference between freezer bags and food storage bags. The freezer bags are a little little uh, thicker. Very inexpensive. You can open them, take what you need, and reclose them. But they don't have that good a short shelf life. Even though you close it and you suck the air out of it, there's still a little bit of air in there. And it's not a really good quality plastic. So so it's 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 okay to use, but it, it's not gonna last all that long. You get what you pay for. Uh, we also some people now are using the handheld vacuum sealer. They're not, they're, they're, I don't know, they're 20, 20 dollars or something. You can open them up and you can close them. And um, you have a fixed bag size. Uh, on, on the most expensive one over here, the food saver like this, you, uh, stuff lasts a very long time. You can actually create your own bag size. But they're expensive. This thing costs about $159. I'll, I'll show you this um, and how this works. Does anybody have one? So these come in rolls, like a roll of uh, paper towels, right? And uh, you put them in, and you, you, you cut them to size, you know, as, as much as you, as big or small as you want. And then you stick them in, and you seal them up. So that's how they work. And you see they're, they're, they're very thick. And it's, it, 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 and this also, this, um, they have special containers that you can stick this on the container, and it will little straw thing and it will suck all the uh, all the air out of it so this is a food saver they they have a couple of brands of these but I just want to pass this around so you can see how how thick that plastic is compared with the the ziploc uh, bag that you that you might have okay so foods you really don't want to you don't want to freeze okay because they're very high water content Unless you want to freeze them for making a smoothie, I guess that's the only way you could probably do it. Celery, cucumbers, lettuce, raw potatoes, you wouldn't want to do it. Radishes, sprouts, salad greens, you don't want to do that. Fruits, apples, grapefruit, grapes. Unless you want to take the frozen grapes and put them in a cocktail, you know, in a little cocktail straw, those are, those are tasty. Um, lemons, limes, and oranges, they'll get mushy and they won't be good, but you can freeze the citrus, the citrus rinds if you want. Zest, um, watermelon also, too, too high water content. And there are some herbs that don't really take that well to freezing uh, raw. Uh, the, the basil, for example. Basil, a lot of people mix the basil up and they put some oil in it, put it in um, ice cube trays, freeze it, take it out and, and put them in, in little, little baggies. But just, just plain basil won't, won't hold up very well. So, okay, Eric. Video. This is our squash lady. Today we're going to be freezing summer squash. First, I've already washed the squash, so we're going to slice it now. Cut that piece off. 
like to slice them. And then I cut them in half. Already did quite a bit over here. And there's lots to go. She has the mother load, that's for sure. <laughs> that's what mine looked like this year. to get all the moisture out. Or else you have ice crystals. So you gotta gotta make sure you get it fairly dry. Because because the squash has a lot of water content in it anyway.
He's going to try like heck to get all the air out of it. Two. She should have a food saving machine like that. Here, so she can do better. a lot of spaghetti squash this year so uh, but but um, yeah that's basically the way you do it if you want to if you want to freeze your, your squash as I say I I prefer uh, the other method this, this method to freezing because I already have the unit I've had it for 10 years so it's a little it like it's hundred fifty dollars but um, to me to me it's well worth it yes um, I would think you would, yeah. I would think you would blanch it for a little bit to. What kind of fruit, fruit, fruit would you like to uh, freeze? Strawberries and all that. You know, they probably won't taste quite as crunchy. You mean like for, for, for toppings, for ice cream and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I would think you would. The same, uh, the same thing uh, prevails. You want to keep the color. You want to keep the uh, the freshness and get all the bacteria, all the dirt off of them. Even the little stuff you can't see. So I would do that with food as well. Yes. I freeze them on a uh, raspberries and strawberries on a cookie sheet on parchment paper. Freeze them flat, one you know, one spread out over the cookie sheet, and then I'll put them in a bag. You can do that as well, so yeah, they so they, they don't clump together. Yeah, they don't clump together. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And get squished and yeah. stuff. So yeah. yeah. Yes. How much are the bags for that machine? I buy them in a big bulky thing. I I I I really I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe maybe six dollars for a, for a roll. That's probably. Uh, uh, Third of the size of a, a paper towel roll, so you can, and you yeah. get the half ones too. Yeah, you so. can go to Walmart and get a eleven foot long bag for eleven. Yeah, eleven foot long roll is what he's trying to say. For about eight or nine dollars. Oh, okay. So this one, one this, this was a long one, uh, came off a long roll, but I cut it this way to make little bags out of it. So you can kind of not only do you, can you adjust, you know, the, the the depth of it, but you can actually. You know, uh, cut it that way as well, and, and make shorter ones. So, uh, yeah, I, I I swear my mind. Yes. So this is the same process you would use with hard squash, like butternut. And Let me tell you something. Hard squash will last you three months if you do it right, sitting right out on the counter. So you got you have to you know do you, do you really do you really want it? The way I do my squash, my 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 butter my my butternut or, or um, that type of squash is. Um, yeah, you you could certainly do it. You could certainly do it this way, but you know, like like potatoes or sweet potatoes or what have you. Um, they say raw potatoes you can't do this with, but some stuff just lasts so long outside that that, that there really isn't any any, any need, need to fill up your, your freezer yeah. with it. Yes. Uh, with Roman tomatoes, mm -hmm. you, know, you blanch them, put them in cold water, take the skin off, or just put them. Let in? me tell you something. Some people do that. But um, and and so, so I'm a, I'm Italian. I love my fresh homemade sauce, right? And there's only a couple of couple of um, types. Of, you have to have Romas or San Marzanos or one of those paste sauces to get it thick. If you crush up a number of um, uh, beefsteak tomatoes or cherry tomatoes, you'll have this much, and you'll and you'll boil and boil and simmer and simmer until you only have this much sauce. And the reason. There's a reason I said that I go organic most of, most times is if you do have a lot of tomatoes that aren't really paste tomatoes and you want to uh, make make a sauce out of them, um, you could add a little bit of a can of contadina tomato paste or something to thicken them up. It, it, don't tell anybody. They, they won't know. Or, or you can even get organic uh, tomato, tomato paste. But the, the, the skin of the tomato, the, I, I, I do, when I crush up my tomatoes, first of all, I do it in my nutrient blender. So, and I don't mind the seed, a little bit of seed or a little bit of, uh, a, a little bit of skin. So I, I would use it. It's good fiber. Why throw it away? They have mills that you can, you can use and crank and all that. But I can't, unless you're going to make tomato uh, ketchup or something that, that you don't want them. But I, I can't see any reason to remove so, them. So you do blanch them and then you cut them up with the skin and then you, 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 you 
then do you cook them and make them into a sauce? You, you, you don't have to. Okay, so uh, you can do that. You can, you can uh, boil for the three minutes, put in ice for three minutes, and you can put your tomatoes and you know, squeeze the air out and put them right in the freezer. You can freeze tomatoes. Or you can make a sauce and you can freeze the sauce. Either way. But you can freeze the tomatoes after blanching. Sometimes it's the, the, it depends on what you want to do with them. You want stewed tomatoes? That what you, obviously, you can't make a salad out of it because be, they won't be the same. But if you want stewed tomatoes, I, I wouldn't throw off the skin. I don't like to waste things. You know, like I say, I'm frugal. You know? <laughs> so, and I like to be healthy. And that's you know, a lot of the stuff, that's where the, the healthy part comes in. So. And you spaghetti squash. What would you do with that? They say you, you um, cook the spaghetti sauce, you either microwave it eight minutes, or you slice it um, and put it uh, cut side down for 45 minutes, cut it, at, scrape it out so it turns to spaghetti, put it in a strainer overnight, it's gonna reduce quite a bit, the sauce is uh, uh, squash and all, mostly water, right? You take it and then you put it in a, a, a bag, uh, uh, your, your baggie, and you zip it up. So you can do your spaghetti. I love spaghetti squash. It's a good alternative. You, you cook it, you bake it, or, or what have you. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Are we ready? Okay. All right. Very good. So. What? what are we done with? Are we done with freezing? Yeah, we're done. What about string beans? Same thing. Just blanch, blanch, em, blanch them, them dry them off. And you wouldn't believe yeah. when you blanch them. You know, they're, they're kind of dingy for being out in the garden or what have you. You you blanch them and they turn bright, bright green. Yeah. And then of course you, you put them in the ice, stops the stops the cooking and. And they taste so much better that way. I have a ton of them. What so. about what about kale? Kale. How, 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 I mean, it's a leafy green, and you said not lettuces, but it's a little. That's got more substance to it. I have so much kale. Try it. Try it. Yeah. yeah try maybe it. maybe flat first. You can certainly. Like you'll, you'll see. You'll see something on how to on dehydrating kale and how to use okay. that. Yeah. I know you can you can make kale chips out of it and all that, yeah, but um, you can you can you can certainly I know you, I do it in my dehydrated use it for soup and all that. So okay. some of yeah. the stuff actually just works out better if you dry it first. It up, dry it oh okay. And just frozen. Yeah, you you didn't blanch it. You just, no, just I just fresh. cook with it, add it to smoothies. Okay. Just, uh, yeah. I didn't all right. It. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. That's good. I like it in my smoothies too. It actually gives it a nice taste, and I. I you know, I, I, I try to get people to, to take my green smoothies once in a while. I said, just close your eyes. I know it's green, but I swear it really tastes good. It tastes nice and fresh, a little bit of green in it. So anyway, let's go uh, for canning. Okay, so water bath canning versus pressure canning. Water bath canning, you can do for tomato, tomato sauce. Plain tomato sauce or tomato sauce reserve. You can do it when you pickle, uh, have a pickled vegetable or pickled vegetable relish. Zucchini relish and zucchini and tomato relish or, or uh, cucumber relish. And you can use your fruits, jams, jellies, and, and, and whole fruits. Uh, you can use a water bath can. And I'm going to tell you because uh, those foods are high acid foods. So high acid foods, uh, you don't need a pressure canner. The pressure canner is there so to make sure that all the air is removed and make sure that that the bacteria is is killed. So pre pressure canning, you can can you can can you can go out in the garden. You, you get your your onions, uh, you know, uh, whatever you want. Make a nice stew with your uh, jalapenos and and you know your fresh tomatoes. All that make a nice stew. Your onions and uh, put some meat in it. And you you can certainly can it. You have to use a pressure canner when you when you uh, do meat. Beets, carrots, green beans. And tomato sauce, when you have chunky, non-acid-loving, uh, uh, non-acidic vegetables, you really should pressure can. People tell me all the time, well, you know, uh, my, my grandmother did it this way, and I, well, that's fine, but I, I'm, I'm trying to, I have to teach the, you know, the safety first, right? And safety first tells me that uh, anything that, any uh, vegetable that's not a high acid, uh, uh, vegetables that uh, should be pressure canned. Now, uh, tomatoes, we have a video on this as well, the tomatoes, um, you actually should add a little bit of uh, vinegar or uh, lemon juice in them to actually increase the acidity a little bit because a lot of times uh, the tomatoes that we grow nowadays, uh, because of the way we like them, we don't like things too, too bitter, you know, too acidic. So they actually grow more alkaline tomatoes now. So just to be safe, 
instead of using the litmus paper to make sure it's at a pH of 4.5, people just put a little bit of a, a tablespoon of, of uh, vinegar or, uh, or lemon juice in, in the jars. Don't be afraid of it. It doesn't alter the taste at all. Yes? Um, but you can freeze it, too. You can freeze it, yeah, of course. Why you would can? Yeah. There's a reason why I can. I'm going to tell you why. Because I remember a, a few years ago, I, I worked at Genzyme, and, and a few of my friends lived in Worcester. I still remember this. They lost their power for two weeks. Everything was gone. When you when you can, you you are, you are, and sometimes my freeze is such a mess, I, I can't even find stuff in there. But of course, <laughs> but of course the mason jars are very neat up in my, my cabinet, so I do both. I do both, okay. definitely do both. So, so it, another, another thing is, the beets, I'm telling you, are not a high acid food. I love my beets, I, 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 I just love them. So, but they're not a high acid food. So they have to be pressure canned. However, if you add uh, vinegar, or you want pickled beets or pickled carrots or, or any of that, then you can pull up a recipe and use a water bath canner. A water bath can is just an old lobster pot or a big pasta pot. Even that pot that lady was using for the zucchini can be used for water bath canning. A pressure canner, uh, let me show you this. A pressure canner, on the other hand, there's two different kinds. This is kind of an old-fashioned kind, and it has weights. That's how you unscrew it, it screws on. Um, it has a weights that go on the top, depending upon what you're actually uh, canning depends on how much, how many of these weights you have to use. So this is the old-fashioned kind. They do have the digital kind that you plug in, and those are those are more expensive. I think this costs like 50, 50 bucks or something. Not not much, but this is uh, this is the one I use, and it, it suits me fine. Couple of couple of things about canning is you have to can. It, it, these are the two size jars I use. This is I use this basically for spaghetti sauce. For a meal, and I use this for my for my green green beans or carrots or beets or something like that. Uh, they have little tiny ones. I don't know what people use those little tiny <laughs> ones for. My goodness, they would make baby food. That's about it. Um, so, but there's, there's there's different sizes, and some are really funky that you can use to, uh, you know, for uh, give away for Christmas gifts. You know, people like this stuff. So, uh, but basically, there's two uh, there's two kinds of lids. There's a wide mouth lid and there's a regular lid. And these lids, and you know, we've, I've talked about this a lot at the classes, these, these lids are two piece, right? And you can buy a package of the lids for like $1.97. They have all this stuff at Walmart. Um, so so you, you use these lids, this combination, only once. And then you can use this cover for your leftovers or what have you, but you don't can with it again because it may be defective because of the heat and all that. So you just you just buy new ones each time, new covers each time you can. New rings as well? We, all this new. It costs a dollar for, for, I think, 10 of them. It, it costs a dollar 97 at, at Walmart. So they're not, they're not expensive. Will they work? Will they poison you? You know, will ants seek in or bacteria get in? Maybe, probably not, but I, I, that's the safe way that that I was, uh, I was taught to do it. So I was always taught to just buy new, well, buy the new lids, not the rings. Because the lids, once you use the lids, that's not, you can't use it again, right? The I, I, would, I, don't use I would never one. use a lid twice. The yeah. ring I would use, but the yeah. lid I wouldn't use. Well, and anyways, after a while, if you do use them, I use them. Yeah. I don't like Tupperware and all that stuff, even for leftovers, so um, they get rusty too. So they, they don't, even, even these don't last too long if you, if you wash them, wash them up. So. You know, if you save your old mayonnaise jars, they fit on top of those. The, oh, oh, sorry, okay. not the jars, the caps for your mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Oh, cool. So that's okay, that's good to know. Use yeah. that. Order. Very good. So, okay. Uh, okay. Any, any questions? Yes. So, I'm curious, um, back to the tomato sauce, why would you do a water bath canning instead of a pressure canning for tomato sauce? Okay. Or you can do pressure canning yeah. for anything. Okay, in, in, in the times you get, the best resource on this is this company. Oh, no, that's not true. This company. Ball. Oh. And because, you know, the, the time it takes to, to uh, 
you know, to, to do, to wad a bath can um, tomato sauce is probably different than to wad a bath can your, your, um, your relish. So it, the, the instructions are on there and, um, and, and you can definitely follow that. But some people don't have a pressure can, that's why. No, no, the whole thing is, you can do anything with a pressure can, and you don't even have to put the, I mean, you can use it as a regular pot. Everything with the water. You, can, you can't do everything with a water bath, but you can really do everything with a pressure can. It busts not that much. So, uh, yep, any other questions? Yes. Can you use that in a glass pot? Um, so, this, I was looking on Amazon, and all, a lot of the canners said cannot be used in a glass pot stove because they're not, Totally flat on the I use mine on a glass top, so maybe I shouldn't. I'll have to. I'll have to <laughs> yeah, I've been using mine on a glass top. So, I, if I had it to do all over again, and I still may eventually get the electric one, it's it's neat. You just push a part. I have a I have a pressure cooker. There's an electric one. Yeah, I have an electric pressure cooker, but I but I, I tend to like that style a little bit more than this. So it's a little bit more expensive. So here's the equipment uh, for, for, for doing the canning. If, if you, if this is a pressure canner over here. And here are the, you get a little kit. I think it's made by Ball as well. This is uh, when you can, you get all these fancy little things. You can, you can pick the, this is used to pick the jars up. And, uh, this is a magnet. So if you have to, you know, pick up the lids or what have you. And this, is a special tool used to measure your head space because depending, because food expands. So different foods have different head space. This is a half quarter of an inch, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and an inch. So you, you can measure how high you actually uh, put this in. There's a very, very important couple of uh, tools missing. One is the, the ladle, and the other is the funnel. So I don't know what We're going to watch a video on uh, see, candy. This one's on tomato. <laughs> For years, we canned tomatoes the way Grandma taught us, using the water bath method. This involved packing sterilized jars with hot cooked fruit and boiling for a designated amount of time usually an hour or more for tomatoes. The water bath method is considered safe for tomatoes with a pH of 4.6 or less. But not all tomatoes are that acidic. Some of the more recently developed strains of tomatoes are low in acid. You can't safely tell by looking or tasting to see if your tomatoes are acidic enough for safe water bath canning. To make sure your tomatoes are at their acidic peak, can them freshly picked. Tomatoes that have sat around for a day or more tend to lose their acid. Bruises and other damage also reduce a tomato's acidity. Late season tomatoes, stressed from shorter days and cooler temperatures, also tend to be less acidic. Grandma also taught us the dangers of improper canning. The bacterium that results from improper Don't canning methods Don't is deadly. So what can you do, short of breaking out the pressure cooker, to make sure your canned tomatoes are safe? Increase the acidity in the jar by adding citric acid or lemon or lime juice. A tablespoon of bottled lemon juice or one quarter teaspoon of citric acid per pint should do it. Then proceed as usual, keeping everything clean and hot, just the way Grandma did. The same procedure should be used when canning homemade tomato sauce or salsas. To protect you and your family, always follow canning directions to the letter and err on the side of caution. Your grandmother would want it that way. My grandmother actually used to use those aprons. So, so yeah, so that's the main thing about canning. I think everybody should do it. And it's a piece of work because as I say, you really have to batch stuff up and and um, you know you, you can't do your 
Yeah, Try and gum is now bursting with more flavor, which is much better than the previous idea we had. Gum that's just bursting. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't part of the presentation. Yeah, right. That was awesome. <laughs> but, it, so you, but it did wake everybody back up. So you can't do your, 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 your pints in your jars. You can't mix your, your relish with your tomato sauce. And so you, you really have to kind of back up what you're doing. But I guarantee it, when, once you do it and you, you see all those jars nicely lined up in your, in your cabinet, in your canteen, they look nice. So. Okay. Can we go back to canning? Yes, please. Sure. Yes. Um, so the lids. So I was always taught by my grandmother. You take the lids, you put them in a pan of water, and you, or in a pan, and you pour water from your canning bath in there, and you let them sit for 15 minutes. Is that what we're still this doing? This is this is basically the process that I use, and you can see this when you uh, if you if you go on the um, the Bell uh, website. First thing you do is you is you boil all your jars in. Some some people use. Uh, the, the dishwasher on, you know, the hottest uh, setting. But I boil, just like Grandma did, in a, in, a, in a big pan all my, I have a lot of pans, so um, I boil them all, uh, uh, the, the lids, uh, everything. And then in another pan, I will start cooking my spaghetti sauce down, or, or what have you, according to the uh, instructions. Then I will, uh, you know, carefully, you know, while they're still warm, line up on a, on, a, on a towel all my empty mason jars, fill them up, and put the lids on, um, not tight all the way, just, just like that. Then you put them in the can, or a pressure can, or a water bath can, or whatever, and, uh, and you use it, fill it with as much water as, as the instructions tell you to. And when you take it out, you'll hear them go, you hear them all, all click in, okay? And a, and a well, and some don't. And if they don't, and, and you don't see a little indentation here, use them up in a week, put them in the fridge, they're fine. They're just not gonna last you 10 years, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I, if, if a, in, I, go, I go to um, fairs and, you know, country fairs and 4-H exhibits and all that, and, you know, they, they have some presentations about d displays on canning, and they, and they, show their stuff like this. You can actually, you know, put put the can like this and shake it. Nothing's going to happen because it's it's vacuum sealed. So um, that's basically how you do it. So. How long do you leave them in? How long do you cook them in the water? You, you process them. You can process them. It depends on whether you're water bath canning, whether you're pressure canning. Anywhere between 10 minutes for relishes and, and stuff with vinegar in it to to probably, I don't know if it's a half an hour or something for tomatoes, but they're all different. I was going to say, I just bought um, a book that Ball puts out called Ball Canning, whatever. It's uh -huh. like a little Bible, and it would tell you, it would give you all the information. All that stuff, yeah. Oh, I know, it's, it's really good, yeah. Long, just, Where did you get the book? Probably the library. Oh, yeah. Probably yeah. here in the library. But yeah, oh, library. right, right. They probably have it, yeah, yeah. 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 No, it was, you, I got it from Amazon. It, it, it's just like a little Bible. Yeah. So And that doesn't change. That's the thing. That doesn't change. So you can buy a book and hand it down to your, you know, your granddaughter or whatever, your grandson, whatever. But it is, it is different for different things. I mean, like yeah. I just did a, a quart of tomato sauce here just yesterday to practice, and I had to I had to make sure there was an inch of inch to two inches of head water, mm -hmm. and then boil it for forty minutes. Yeah. There was another thing that said, you know, inch to two for thirty minutes if I used. A different kind of, I don't know if it was between tomato or not. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Yeah. So it's very specific. It is specific. Whatever you do. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Does the process cook the food? You cook the food. Pretty much you cook the food. Oh, it depends. Which, which, which food is it? Does you're the talking? boiling process when you're canning, does it, yeah, does when you're water canning? Does it cook what's inside the Like jars? a tomato sauce? Yeah. yeah. No, you cook it in a van. The same way with a lot of fruit. I, you know, I can't, I had a friend that had the mother load of pears from his tree. Well, I had too many eggplant and peppers. So I would trade, you know, both in the late summer. So we would trade, and you actually have to cook it in a, in a sugar, sugar syrup. So a lot of times you have to cook. The, the canning process is more to, 
to vacuum, take the air out, and um, and kill bacteria or stop bacteria. Don't don't leave a, uh, any room for bacteria to grow. Yes. Um, in in relation to what Terry was saying, just like I feel like when I either bought canned pickles, like sometimes they almost like taste more cooked. They're like softer versus like really crisp pickles. Uh huh. So, like if you're doing pickles, is it is it cooking them? At all, like with the water bath, or? Well, um, there's several ways. Those kosher pickles that you have are not are not pickled in that way. They're preserved in brine or what have you. So that they're not. It's it's they're they're kind of different. But um, I'm not sure if there's a. I'm sure there's some kind of canning recipe. But the crisp ones, I I think they're actually done with salt. The kosher ones that that the, um, that you get in the deli. I don't think those are pickled in, in the normal way. But, but typically... Um, yeah, but, it, but the water bath, no matter you do it for 10 minutes or 5 minutes, that's going to cook what's in there even more. So whether it's your sauce or it's your pick... Do you, do you water bath pickles? I don't make pickles. I don't, so. I don't think when you pickle something, you water bath it because of all the salt content and the acid what, and the vinegar, you can just... It depends on the recipe. how do you get the lid right? to seal to the jar? What? You get the lid to seal there's to the jar. There's a 10-minute... Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, there's, so. there's a, that's okay. No, there's a, there is a 10-minute process of okay. time. Okay. Uh, for for relish and pickles, uh, okay. there, there is only because of the bacteria. Just just safety first. I'm sure people do it a lot of different ways, and and they don't they don't cook them. But um, and then that seals the lid to yeah. the the, ru yeah, the rubber short, gets softened uh, and then gets sealed. I to pour the, lid. the warm, uh, warm when I do pickles, the warm brine over the cucumbers. Yep. Leave the lid on the jar sitting on the counter loose for about an hour. Yep. Then put the ring on and then put it in the fridge. And the temperature drop and the pressure drop will actually seal the jar for you. Okay. You All can right. seal that the jars, sense. but they, in, yeah. in this is where we, we disagree sometimes, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm safety first, and the, the, they say to process them, there's a process time involved of 10 minutes. To say, if you want them to last 10 years, right, right, I mean, right, if you right, want right, to eat right. them over the next couple of weeks, you put them in the fridge and you know you use that recipe. But if you want them to last a long time, there supposedly is a, is a process time. See, that's why we always put the lids in a little bowl with hot water and let them sit so that when you did something like pickles, you could do it. And yep. that ridge, that rim around there, the, the rubber gets all soft, then yep. it adheres to the glass. So that's, that's what I was talking there you about. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to dehydrating. Cool. Okay. All right. So dehydrating, um, that's taking the water out of something and water and air are your enemies. Um, so it's taking the air out of, out of something. Uh, fruits, veggies, herbs. <coughs> Meats, everything can be dehydrated, depending upon if you have a good quality dehydrator. This is mine. It's not a good quality dehydrator. I should get one, but we do have a video on it. And this is what it looks like. And I do a lot of herbs because they're fairly quick. You have to do them low so they don't burn. But I have the, I have so much oregano that grows. Every couple of years I have parsley that won't quit. You know, of course my mint grows every year. I have to keep it contained or it'll, it'll take over my yard, let alone the garden, um, and, and lemon basil, all that. So anyway, um, I do have um, each tray, you, you place the um, whatever you're trying to dry, and um, you know, sing, single layered in here. And then, you know, depending upon what the, the recipe says, there's a little, um, you know, can do it hotter or, or cooler. If in doubt, keep it low so you don't, you know, you don't burn anything, especially if it's something fragile like, like, a, uh, like herbs. But um, you can dehydrate a lot of stuff. Um, there's a, don't, not to confuse dehydrating, which takes away, I believe it's 90, 90 to 93% of the moisture of a, of a product, uh, of, of food. Whereas dehyd uh, excuse me, freeze drying takes away more than that, or like 97% of the of the liquid of something, but freeze, and they sell them, the, the, the dehydrators for home use cost about $1,900. Oh, so no. I'm fine with my, my dehydrating. <laughs> and when you dehydrate, you can, you can then store them in a, in a, um, in a mason jar, or you can, you can store them in, a, in, a, in one of those uh, sealer bags or what have you to keep the dust off, whatever. That'll last a good long time as well. So, so sun-dried tomatoes, they're not sun-dried tomatoes, they're dehydrated. Right? Yeah, you can dry them in the sun. That's That'd be kind of hard. Yeah. No, I mean, it's the, the way they used to do it. And then they like rot and. Yeah, they would. Yeah. Yeah, you could dehydrate. Can you yeah. Dehydrate it. In the back, in the back window. Yeah. 
There you go. Oh my goodness. It smells so good. Oh, please. But there's not much juice. <laughs> and, then, and then you put all, all the oil and, and, and you put it in. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. What, what about using your oven? I mean, I don't have a dehydrator. Could you oven use your oven? goes to 200. This one goes down to. Well, so my oven I can get to. 160. I can get my oven to 100. I can keep my, un, my oven at 100 degrees. Oh, okay. By opening the door? No, no. It's got a setting. It's called hold. I have an electric glass oh, oven. Okay. It's got a hold thing. It all depends on the product. I can do, I can really? do, could, it could be. This is not I a good one. We have a video I, like I want to no, share no, that has a really that. good uh, good dehydrator on it, and, and you can see that. But this one, uh, basically, I use I use for herbs. But you can see the real powerful uh, Excalibur, they call it. So mm -hmm. you'll see that. You can you can do anything in there. So go ahead, Eric. How do you use dehydrated vegetables? Some, you'll see on the video. Oh. But the dehydrated vegetables, some of them you reconstitute and you would not believe they were ever dehydrated. So oh, there's the oven right there. <laughs> you, can, you can do it. You can certainly do it. Um, it but they're more apt to burn, that's all. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I could guess the exact, you know. I, I don't know if you like your bell, right? <laughs> and mine goes to 200 degrees, my oven. That's that's the lowest setting that it goes. But you, you can certainly dry your herbs like this if you want. but. But I tried it last year. You know, I made some homemade Dusty. soaps and some homemade uh, uh, bath bombs and all that. And they also gave it everybody a little container of, of the herbs, and they they seem they seem to like it. So and they, they they grow. The more you pick the herbs, cut them back, the the more they the more they grow. <laughs> so go ahead, Eric. All right, let's go see that video. This is a, this is a really cool video. So how much would that how much would that dehydrate? Well, like fifty bucks on Amazon. And the big, the expensive ones that she has, this woman's video, they're like two, all the two. I write pretty much all day. Yeah, she's insane. She's had a show for five. 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 I'm 
way I can start the process there. And I'm going to take the potatoes. I'm going to do the same thing with them. I'm going to steam them. And I'm not going to steam them all the way through. They're mushy. I'm going to make them sort of somewhat crisp. I just want to lock the enzymes in so that the uh, starches stay. Okay. So what you do is you'll steam these until they're somewhat um, soft, but not not much. After the process, as you notice, they're going to be like this translucent, like this. And that's a good potato. Now this is a yellow potato right here. And that potato, um, even though it looks real yellow when you cook it, it will turn back to the original color. Same thing with um, cauliflower. Cauliflower, when you process it, it will turn, after you dehydrate it, will turn like a brown. But not to worry, because once you cook it again, it's going to turn white again. All right, um, here I have the chopped potatoes. Now, this, these are, this is something you'd use if you're going to do home fries or what have you. You would use a chopped potato. Okay, and then over here we have, this is your um, sweet potato. That also has to be processed in order to lock in the enzymes and the starches. So here you have what it would look like, the consistency before you dehydrate it. So it's going to look like this. Okay, it's going to be flexible, and uh, you can put it on the tray, and it will dry out. And when it does dry out, when they do dry out, they're going to look like this. And this is the sweet potato that has been dehydrated. And when you cook this, it will turn right back into a sweet potato, and you can't tell the difference. It actually tastes better sometimes, I think, than it does prior to that. All right, here we have... Um, lemon, and the lemon, um, like I said, I use a, a meat slicer so the consistency all looks the same, it's a lot faster that way too, and you don't have to worry about cutting your fingers as often. And next to it I have oranges, there's no processing involved in this one, you just put this on the dehydrator tray and dehydrate that. You have your tomatoes here, no processing needed, just slice it and put it on the tray. You have your zucchini and your summer squash. Now the summer squash, you might want to steam it just for a few minutes, just so that the skin on the outside becomes more tender, so that when you do rehydrate it, it's not tough. But the zucchini, I don't process that. And if you're going to chop up your zucchini, like put in a food processor and chop it real small and dehydrate it, that way you can you put it in a jar and use it that way for um, zucchini bread. So I would chop it prior to the dehydrating, and then I would smooth it out of the tray. Here we have carrots. These carrots on the front are raw. These carrots in the back have been steamed. Not in water, just steamed. And what I'm going to do is, what you do with this is you would steam it. And these are baby carrots. And I purchased these on sale for 99 cents a pound. And that's pretty cheap. I like the baby carrots because they're tender. Now, I chop them about like this. Okay? And and this is the whole one that's already my process. Now, on the carrot, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to spray a little lemon juice on it because this will help keep the color so they don't turn brown and look yucky. And um, so some people will use sorbic acid, um, which is the vitamin C. It's one and a half tablespoons per gallon of water. And you would soak anything that you process in this for about two minutes. I don't use it. I just use plain old lemon juice. There's another way, too, is you can take um, one-third honey, one cup of water, boil it, let it cool, and then you can put your uh, bananas and apples and stuff in there. I don't use that either because the honey, I think, makes the uh, vegetables and the fruits, when you do use it this way, sticky. And I don't want my precious food to be sticking together. Okay, so here you have, I'm going to show you this here. These, this is what the carrot size looks like here. Okay, now that right there, that carrot right there, that's what it looks like after you dehydrate the chopped one. Now, you can dehydrate the carrots just like this, these little baby carrots. You can put them on and dehydrate them just like this, and when they're done, that's what that carrot will look like. So, when you rehydrate the carrot, the carrot will come out just like this after you rehydrate it. It's hard to believe that this little thing is going to look like this again, but it will. Okay? So, over here, next we have...
have peppers. We have jalapeno peppers, uh, red peppers, and green peppers again. Now, you can do the green peppers without steaming them, or I boil them just for a short period of time. And you can do it this way. Um, if you want to, you don't have to process it over there. You, but the reason I do it this way is because I like that roasted flavor on the peppers. So what you do is you put them skin size up, and you leave them in there just enough to blister the skin. As you can see right here, the skin is all blistery. Okay? Um, I do take a little bit of pan, the only time I use it, and just lightly spray it prior to um, putting it in the oven. And I, use, I usually put it in around 400 degrees, and I leave it in there until it blisters. And um, when you put it in the hydrator, you're going to turn it around like this. Okay? You're going to want the skin side down. So when you put it in the oven, you're going to want the skin side up. And when you put it in the dehydrator, skin side down. Okay. Um, here I have spinach. Spinach is great. You can take spinach and you can fill up the trays with the spinach and it will come out nice and dry. And I can come over here and show you what the spinach looks like. This is the, the spinach where it's been dehydrated. Um, it's great like if you're going to make spinach dip and so on and so forth. You always have fresh spinach right there at your hands and you don't have to worry about running out to the store and getting it. Okay. That's it. That is a presentation. Um, so how do you rehydrate everything? Yeah. Just like you add a little bit of water, a little bit at a time, and then you'll know when it's the same size. So. <laughs> really, quite, it's really quite <laughs> simple. <laughs> but you know what people do, right? Think about it. You have your celery you grow in your garden. You have your onions, your your um, your your um, carrots and all that. You cut everything up. You dehydrate it. Then you put them in those nice layers in your in your uh, mason jar, right? And you put some rice or something in there, and that's a chicken soup you, you give us. I've seen those in the store. They cost like 10 bucks in the, in the store. So soup in a can, uh, soup in a jar. Soup in a everything, jar. put everything you need in one all jar. All pretty, though, all yeah, layered yeah. up yeah. real pretty. Yeah. Well, it's cool. How long does it take to, to rehydrate it? It doesn't water. take long at all. You can, you, can use, you can use warm water. You can probably use warm water. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it matters. So. So yeah. how long does it take to dehydrate something? It all depends on what you're okay. dehydrating. All right. It all depends on the power of the dehydrator and the and the temperature that you're using. They're all they're all this is not this is not an Excalibur, trust yeah, yeah, yeah. me. She yeah. has an Excalibur. Yes. When you do like potatoes and sweet potatoes, like you eat can you eat them like like chips after? I don't think so. I, I mean you you, you yeah, you might be able to. Or like the, the lemons, like put sugar on them or something. Yeah, like try right. yeah. sugar and then put them on But I think they would awesome. thick, and I think they'd be a little, a little hard the way she did them. But. Yeah, it's a little bit of a big chip. Could be, no. yeah. <laughs> well, could you could bananas and you get banana yeah, chips. Yeah. Oh, you probably could do it, yeah. Hey, come on. Maybe if you cooked it all the way, then did it. Instead yeah, yeah. of just oh, really, like she said, just that little bit. I think you'd have to cook it all the whole way. Because I tried that once with one of those dried fruits, so it's the vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know how good they are. I'm sure they'd be. If you made it yourself, I'm sure it'd be great. Yeah. So. Oh, um, what's your favorite thing you can eat? Oh my! I never met a food I didn't like. So I. So my favorite. What I. What I. What I can. Basically, I. I'm big on the. On the spaghetti. I'm Italian, like I say. So I'm big in the. In this in the spaghetti sauce, so I I probably have you know at least a, a dozen jars e every season uh, of that. Uh, some stuff I keep up with. I really love to can my carrots and my beets, but I tend to use them up as they come up in the garden <coughs> in the spring and don't don't have as many as I like. So. And what about the squash? You said that um, when you freeze the squash and then you know thaw it out again, is there something particular that you make with that thawed squash? I put in spaghetti sauce. It's quite good in spaghetti sauce. Oh, yeah. So you can you can you can uh, also freeze your grated. You, we won't blanch, but you can freeze your grated zucchini as well if you want to make zucchini bread. Oh, so okay. yeah. yeah. Any other questions? We're over. I hope she doesn't. I don't know what time this library closes. What time is the library closes? Yeah. It ain't. Oh yeah. So I. So just to let you know, um, Eric and I have a. Uh, we have two uh, Facebook pages. Uh, Facebook groups uh, that we have. Mine has over 40,000 people from around the world gardening all kinds of things. Eric's is basically vegetables. I've got the, 
I've got everything from rose bushes to mango trees on mine. And we also have a YouTube channel. We're going to have to set up, really going to have to put more content up there. But we have all these links. We have several PowerPoint presentations as well um, on the group. So in any case, if, if you want, uh, if you want to network, uh, our cards are there. Please give me your email and I'll send you um, all the links and you can have look through all that information. There's a lot of good stuff up here. Does anybody garden here or are you, are you just canners? There you go. Yeah. yeah. It all goes hand in hand, right? So, okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.